Well, Bain Capital, uh, from its origins, was a consulting firm. And, and therefore, we're differentiated kind of by definition. So our theory was we could take the consulting skills we use to help build successful businesses and apply that to investing. So we've built a very large staff globally and, 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 and very large in North America. We have over 500 people here right in our Boston office. And uh, we have a whole group of people that focuses on companies and how do we transform those companies? How do we work with CEOs to make those companies stronger, better strategically, and growing? And that's how we differentiate ourselves. Our competitive advantage when we first started was we had these consulting skills, general consulting skills to apply to a business, whether that be looking for acquisitions to make them bigger, looking for new markets, helping them export. We had those skills. As the industries evolved and got more competitive, we felt like we had to really drive down and have a global vertical market approach. So we have a TMT group, we have an industrials group, we have a medical group, and all these, 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 the group works together globally to make sure we're seeing all the right deals, to make sure we have the capabilities on a vertical markets basis to add value to those companies. We talk about Asia in terms of China, India, Japan, even Australasia, Malaysia, Korea, gigantic area, huge economically as, as those countries have boomed over the last 20, 30 years. Well, part of the Bain Capital strategy is that we're kind of one firm and we work on a globally integrated basis. So we're looking for opportunities in Asia, for example, companies that want to expand into Europe or the U.S. Uh, there are several examples. We invested a number of years ago in a small company called GA Pack, which is a little juice box company, and competing with Tetra Pak, and, and we help them expand into Europe. Uh, we've taken many uh, of those kinds of ideas in Asia and helped them expand. Vice versa, we have companies here that want to be in Asia. So uh, our global network has been very critical to our strategy. Well, first of all, we never viewed ourselves as a big buy firm. We're, we're not public. Uh, we still have an approach where we'll do a wide variety of, uh, of, of deal sizes. We have a venture capital arm. We do smaller buyouts as well as large buyouts, so we're kind of agnostic in terms of the size. Uh, so we don't view ourselves as, a, as, let's say, a large buyout firm. Certainly the proof of the pudding is it, when we raised our last couple of funds, we had oversubscriptions, which means you know, our investors were happy and we had many new investors come in as well. So we view ourselves as, as, a, as a firm that is really trying to take these, these principles of, of how to build great businesses, apply them to our portfolio on a vertical markets basis, make those businesses grow and add value. And we think we can do that you know, in good markets and bad markets. And, and obviously in, 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 in right now with pros, prices being reasonably frothy, you really have to look for investments that you can make a difference, that you can transform, so you'll make a great rate of return. We're not philosophically against that. Um, I think, I, I think uh, it, by happenstance, the larger firms are, are listed, and, and we have assets comparable to those. Uh, I think that's a strategic decision that each firm has to make. Some of that's driven by liquidity need for founders. We haven't had that in our firm. We have a broad group of ownership, so we haven't had any needs to have liquidity for founders. Uh, but we step back and the way we look at that decision is, will that help our limited partners? Will that, will that help our investors? If we f and we, we found right now, it, 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 to us, we can operate without being public. We have no needs for capital. So, so right now, we found a competitive advantage to be private, to, to stay under the radar screen, and have not, had no issues with running our business without being public. If, if that situation changed, we'd obviously look at it. Well, that's helped enormously. We, we have, uh, we're actually still a very young company. We're, we're about 30 years old at this point in time. And so we have managing directors in their 30s and their 40s and their 50s, and even a couple that are you know, approaching or in 60s at this point in time. So we have, we have a, a really broad group on a global basis. And, and, uh, and so there's a little less risk with the Bain Capital given that broad group of partners we have. We've always had a lot of co-investments, either by LPs or by other uh, private equity shops, given our fund sizes over history of time have been a little smaller than, than the others. Um, so we're used to that. Uh, so, so we see that as a continuing trend and dynamic. Actually, it's a really positive one for us. So right now, some of our largest limited partners and our limited partners in general who would like to co-invest, because our funds are smaller, we have a vehicle to do that. And, uh, and so we love to partner with our LPs, and many of them have been with us for, for 25 or 30 years. We love to partner to do deals. It's a great source of capital. It's great for them. It's great for us. So it's a positive dynamic as far as we're concerned. 
there are different firms approaching different strategies. We've taken a strategy to try to deliver high returns uh, to, to investors, and that's given us this focus on building businesses. And so, so at, at this point in time, we don't have a kind of a large retail effort out there ourselves because we've had capital from our traditional investors and from uh, pension funds and, and funds of that sort. So we've had plenty of capital. So we really haven't, haven't built that. Other firms are trying to be asset managers, maybe go, go more broadly, uh, collect more money for more different kinds of products. I don't know if there's a bright line between you know asset managers or you know smaller funds. You know we're we're somewhere a hybrid of both of those. We try to operate as a series of smaller funds, but when you add them up, uh, we're over 75 billion dollars in assets, so we're a good size asset manager as well. So I think our philosophy globally is to uh, you know get into product lines that have this this analytic capability where we can outwork other people, where we can outanalyze the, the competition, where we think we can get great returns for our investors. And that'll dictate, you know, what the size of our funds are. So we're not trying to be the biggest, we're just trying to be the best.